Put aside everything you thought you knew about being human. After years of rigorous scientific research, evolutionary detective Danny Vendramini has developed a theory of human origins that he believes is stunning in its simplicity, yet breathtaking in its scope and importance. Not only have we had the wrong impression of the nature and behavior of Neanderthals, he argues, but we have been fed sentimental, anthropomorphic images of them as well. Neanderthals, he says, were primitives and would have looked very primitive. There is no reason to suppose they were clean-shaven and good-smelling. The Neanderthals, he expounds, came from the frozen north, they had large nocturnal eyes and were six times stronger than the average modern human. His thesis is that many physical, social, and psychological characteristics now seen as uniquely human are direct results of Neanderthal predation on our ancestors, and the theory will be sure to ignite controversy among any group of people genuinely interested in human evolution. However, many controversial theories were once thought to be crazy. For example, Alfred Wegener's hypothesis of continental drift, put forward in 1915. Wegener's hypothesis was scorned by many at the time and it was not until the 1960s, with the understanding of plate tectonics, that an underlying mechanism to support his hypothesis was provided. Also, Graham Hancock and other researchers proposed theories that were once thought to be crazy, such as comet impacts, and lost ancient civilizations. This theory provides a similarly bold and controversial hypothesis about human origins. But sometimes it takes an outsider to cut through the most intractable problems of science. It is unquestionably the biggest shakeup in evolutionary theory since Darwin, according to believers. This Neanderthal predation theory is the stuff of nightmares. If true, every monster from every European myth, every horror novel, and every scary movie may be derived from memories of the Neanderthal. After all, Neanderthals did have to compete with Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, who were likely their own ancestors in Europe, so they must have been tough customers. Both of these archaic humans have been found to have killed and eaten other human species, and even their own kind. I think that Homo erectus would have been an even more formidable super predator than Neanderthals. Groups of Homo erectus hunted large prey with nothing but crude spears, so they must have been pretty fearless. Modern humans have been called the third chimpanzee, but, Vendramini asks, why are we such a distinctively unique primate species, anatomically, behaviorally, and why do we have these deep fears? His thesis that intensive predation by Neanderthals forcing evolutionary changes offers insight into the human psyche. He says that the trauma from Neanderthal predation generated the selective pressure, which transformed a tiny survivor population of early humans into modern humans. He cites archaeological and genetic evidence to show Neanderthals weren't friendly omnivores, but savage, cannibalistic carnivores, super predators of the Stone Age. The Neanderthal predation theory reveals that Neanderthals were apex predators, who resided at the top of the food chain, and everything else, including humans, was their prey. You can imagine them using their superior vision to raid Homo sapiens villages under cover of darkness. The theory may be one of those groundbreaking ideas that revolutionizes scientific thinking. It represents a quantum leap in our understanding of human origins. The theory reveals that Eurasian Neanderthals hunted and killed early humans for 50,000 years in an area of the Middle East known as the Levant. However, is there any truth to the Neanderthal super predator theory? It sounds rather absurd at first glance. Well, spoilers, it is just as absurd as you were thinking. The author cites evidence to demonstrate that this prolonged period of cannibalistic predation began about 100,000 years ago, and that by 50,000 years ago, the human population in the Levant was reduced to as few as 50 individuals. There is actually evidence from Israel of sapiens Neanderthal hybrids from this time. Around 100,000 years ago modern humans arrived in Europe and the Middle East. They encountered the Neanderthals, who were a gorilla-like super-predator, six times as strong as the average human, according to the book. These vicious and territorial Neanderthals hunted humans almost to extinction, reducing our population to a tribe of just 50. This forced us to adapt. Those 50 survivors salvaged humankind from annihilation, by transforming into aggressive and predatory human beings. Then spreading across the globe, killing all Neanderthals and Denisovans in their path, until every other hominid became extinct. 
The theory describes this global migration through Europe, Africa, Asia and Australia, and the Americas, as a blitzkrieg. It did not end until these hyper-aggressive humans were the only hominids left alive. It was the first instance of evolution by genocide. The archaeological record confirms Neanderthal lives were anything but peaceful. Neanderthalenses were skilled big-game hunters, using spears to take down deer, elk, bison, even rhinos and mammoths. It defies belief to think they would have hesitated to use these weapons if their families and lands were threatened. Archaeology suggests such conflicts were commonplace. Prehistoric warfare leaves telltale signs. A club to the head is an efficient way to kill, clubs are fast, powerful, precise weapons, so prehistoric Homo sapiens frequently show trauma to the skull. And so do Neanderthals. This Neanderthal skull found in France suffered a blow that split the skull in half, some 36,000 years ago. Indeed, a prehistoric skull could be the world's first murder mystery. The 430,000-year-old skull seems to show the victim was bludgeoned to death. Scientists piece together the world's earliest murder mystery, showing that an ancient human appears to have met their end after being bludgeoned to death and thrown down a cave shaft. The skull, found in a cave in Spain, which has two holes above the left eye, belonged to Homo heidelbergensis, an early human closely related to Neanderthals, who lived around 430,000 years ago. The almost complete skull shows clear evidence of two serious impacts. The apparent use of a murder weapon, even if it was only a stone, and the apparent repeated blows to the head, hints that humans were turning their increasingly sophisticated intellect towards violent ends, as well as towards cooperation and survival. There are big problems with this theory, that seem to suggest that it is fundamentally flawed. First of all, modern human had already sailed to Australia by 65,000 years ago, so this group of 50 could not have been the only Homo sapiens on Earth 50,000 years ago. Neanderthals may have killed and even eaten modern humans on occasion, and there is evidence that Neanderthals practiced cannibalism. But the idea that Neanderthals drove the evolution of modern humans is not supported by scientific or genetic evidence. But the Neanderthal predation theory brings to mind several interesting studies. One of these studies was on the diet of Neanderthals, providing zooarchaeological evidence for the idea. Neanderthals subsisted mainly on meat, and a study provides molecular support for the theory of their carnivorous predilection. It even postulates that Neanderthals were among the apex predators in their sphere, even after anatomically modern humans began to arrive among them. The earliest ancestors of archaic humans are believed to have subsisted on plants, much like the greatest of apes today, the gorilla. However, the early vegetarians among the hominins went extinct, while the meat-eaters carried on to this day. Being an armivore seems to have become a trend by the time of the diminutive Australopithecines, who lived three to four million years ago, and ate everything that moved, or didn't move. Scavenging from dead animals, brought down by other predators, seems to have been very much their practice. By the time of the much taller Homo erectus, the taste for meat was firmly entrenched, though some scientists aren't sure these early hominins cleverly trapped or stabbed their supper. But they did seem to create spears, and were physiologically capable of throwing them, indicating they were probably hunters. And they could also run very fast, which would have been a good skill for hunting. It is pretty clear that after a couple of million years, the ancestral hominin to Neanderthals and modern humans had become an omnivore with a craving for meat, so it would follow that both of us would continue that habit. For instance, bones of butchered animals were found in Neanderthal domains. The study postulated that the Neanderthal developed a thickened thorax, compared with us gracile Homo sapiens, to accommodate their enlarged livers and kidneys, because of their protein-heavy diet. Weapons the Neanderthal used, presumably to hunt dinner, rather than hunt each other or stabbed carrots, have also been identified. A recent study even suggests they might have developed spears they could throw from afar, as opposed to just sticking the spear into their prey from up close. But the latest, crucial evidence comes from molecular analysis of nitrogen isotopes found in collagen, a protein, which in turn was found in two Neanderthal sites in France. That isn't much of a sample size, statistics-wise, but the results match nicely with the other evidence. Isotopes are variants of an atom that have different weights because they have different numbers of neutrons. 
For instance, proteins, which contain nitrogen, can have nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15. The study showed the ratios of nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15 in Neanderthal bones were found to be similar to those of today's big carnivores, such as wolves. That strongly suggests that the Neanderthal ate mainly meat, with a little vegetable on the side. So, what animals were the Neanderthals eating, based on the isotopes? In short, scientists don't know what exactly they ate. But it does reinforce the position that the Neanderthals were not vegetarians, and they wolfed down a lot of meat, as much as 80% of their diet. So this lends credibility to the idea that Neanderthals were apex predators. In another study, the human and Neanderthal love affair was traced back to Israel, 55,000 years ago, where remains of a hybrid Neanderthal sapiens skeleton were found in a cave. Also, archaeologists digging in a cave in northern Israel uncovered teeth, dating to at most 38,000 years ago, that display a mix of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens features. Neanderthals are thought to have been long extinct in Israel by then, though some may have survived in isolated pockets. The teeth, therefore, likely belong to humans who had interbred with our evolutionary cousins. The researchers conducted CT scans and 3D analysis on four of the teeth, comparing multiple features in their morphology, to a sample of dozens of prehistoric human teeth from other sites across the world. Unlike bones, teeth are preserved well, as they are made of enamel, which is the substance in the human body most resistant to the effects of time. Scientists were able to use the external and internal shape of the teeth, found in the cave, to associate them with the two hominin groups, Neanderthal and Homo sapiens. All four teeth, which belonged to four different individuals, displayed a mix of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens features. This usually happens in cases of interbreeding. Therefore, this was a Homo sapiens population, but with a strong Neanderthal genetic component. Scientists discovered the 55,000-year-old modern human skull in a cave in Western Galilee. According to the study, the first interbreeding between humans and Neanderthals may have taken place in what is now Israel. The researchers think that the hybrid, who they think might be female, though it's hard to tell with the brow ridge missing, may have been part of the first wave of humans who moved on from Africa to colonize Europe and Asia. In another study, an ancient Eastern European man was shown to have had a Neanderthal great-great-grandfather. Analysis of the jawbone of a man, who lived about 40,000 years ago, reveals the closest direct descendant of a Neanderthal, who mated with a modern human. A modern human who lived in what is now Romania between 37,000 and 42,000 years ago had at least one Neanderthal ancestor as little as four generations back, which is to say, a great-great-grandparent. The specimen consists only of a male jawbone, and from the moment it was discovered, its shape suggested that it might belong to a hybrid between Homo sapiens and Neanderthal. Those claims have remained controversial, but the new analysis lays the controversy to rest. The genome scientists sequenced from the samples was incomplete, but it was enough for them to conclude that between 6 and 9 percent of the genome is Neanderthal in origin. People living today have 2 to 4 percent Neanderthal DNA, at most, that difference is more significant than it might seem. Scientists found seven huge pieces of chromosomes that seem to be purely of Neanderthal origin. That means pieces had to come from a relatively recent ancestor, since they hadn't yet been broken up by the reshuffling that happens in each generation, as chromosomes combine. Now that the intermingling is all the more certain, there are some exciting questions to answer. What was the cultural exchange between these two species like? What was life like for the hybrid child of a modern human and a Neanderthal? The Neanderthal predation theory suggests that modern man violently expunged the Neanderthal from the planet. But if humans and Neanderthals had centuries to get to know each other, then the story of our success and their failure becomes much more interesting and nuanced.